So up to this point, what we've used is this force of gravity, and, and we've done people standing on things, boxes on things, and one of the first things we do is we label in the force of gravity goes down, and then the force normal up. And we've described this force of gravity as equaling mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So what I had kind of hinted at before is that this is true on the surface of the earth. And I said that if I want to weigh less, I go to the top of a mountain and throw my scale there because the scale will read less. Well, this is why. Newton, he, he was pretty darn nifty and he derived this behavior, the relationship between two bodies. And what he said is that if I have two masses near each other, that they experience this attraction, center of mass to center of mass. And that attraction is the force due to gravity. And so he did a lot of experiments and what he came up with was this relationship that the force due to gravity is this thing big G, which is the gravitational constant times the product of the two masses interacting with each other divided by r squared or d squared. This d is just denoting that we're distance of center of mass to center of mass. And let me make sure that this is clear. This is center of mass. Center of mass. And so if we have two things orbiting each other, which is the thing that we look at the most with this is like planetary motion. Because if you notice that this 10 to the negative 11 is small, it indeed is. In fact, there's a comparison of forces on your handout for chapter six. Then in the, in the very bottom of it, as far as weak forces go, the force due to gravity is tiny. So this force is experienced between you and other people, but it is so small that it's, you don't even notice it. But between planets, when we get masses going that big, then we definitely notice that. So let's see. All right, what I've written down here is that the mass of the Earth is this 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. And if we have time at the end of the quarter, we'll talk about where the heck this comes from and how we figured that out. And then the radius of the Earth is this 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters. Now I emphasize this d squared as being the center of mass to center of mass because what you get is things relative to the surface of the Earth, not the total distance. So you'll take the center of the Earth, the radius of the Earth, and add in the distance that something is above it and that's what's going to give us our d squared. So let's see how this looks. So I have a satellite and I want to know how fast it's going. So I want to calculate the velocity of the satellite. So now let's think about what that velocity is in terms of um, what we've been doing with center seeking motion. So say this is the satellite, it would be going like that away around the earth. Right? So it'll be in some stable orbit around the Earth. Now, the, the size differences, obviously, for the distances I, I have them drawn, aren't to scale. I just want to emphasize that. So before, what I was talking about as far as our velocities, I'm just going to use this circle to, to emphasize this, is that that velocity we're talking about is actually that tangential velocity. So as this thing rotates around, I can keep drawing these straight arrows off of tangentially to the circular path, and that gives me the tangential velocity. So when you see questions asking about the velocity, that's what we're talking about. Let's see, and we know that it's in a stable orbit. This is just a way of saying that it's not wobbling. There's nothing else interacting with it, no other forces that are detracting from that orbit. So we're only looking at the force due to gravity. So let's see, we have the force due to gravity. And what have we, we defined as far as center seeking acceleration? So let's think about that. Let's remember that we said, so center seeking acceleration is 
v squared over r. It's in a stable orbit. So if I think in terms of here's my Earth and here is my satellite, well, that center seeking force is the force due to gravity. So the force due to gravity then is going to equal the mass of the satellite times the acceleration for this center seeking force. So now we're defining this force of gravity completely. So we have the gravitational constant g m m over this distance squared equals m v squared over r. So now what I'm going to say is that we keep seeing these two variables. And this one I wrote differently just to emphasize that it's center of mass to center of mass. But this r and this r, these are exactly the same thing. So I can rewrite this again as g m. Oops, let's take a look. My little masses cancel out. So these little masses, this is the small mass of the thing orbiting the big mass. In terms of two people, it would be like if I'm being accelerated by you, that would be this mass. But in terms of planets, this would be the small thing or the satellite orbiting the big thing. So between the sun and the earth, this would be the sun's mass, this would be the earth's mass. And we can look at that acceleration. So let's see. So I have GMM over R squared equals V squared over R. Now I notice that these two things occur on both sides. So math wise, I you know, multiply this side by R and this side by R. And then I see that that R cancels with that. So in the end, the expression that you see for this planetary velocity, is taking the square root of this thing, gives me gravitational constant, the mass of the thing that it's orbit, I'm, the mass of the thing being orbited, and the radius, the center of mass to center mass distance. So this one we're given that, let's see, it is 5,200 kilo, kilometers, sorry, above the Earth, above. So let's write this in meters. So that is 5,200 times 10 to the third meters. Let's simplify this sum. This is 10 to the third, 10 to the fourth, fifth, sixth, so 5.2 times 10 to the six meters above the Earth. So its center of mass is gonna be negligible, than sit complete, I'm sorry, compared to the distance that it is above the Earth. It's probably gonna be like, I don't know, 100 meters or so. So it's not even something that's gonna show up here. So that's the only reason we're not worried about the center of mass position for the satellite. But we get to the Earth and we're like, well, the Earth has, let's see, what is this radius? This radius of 6.3 times 10 to the sixth. So plus 6.3 times 10 to the sixth. And hopefully it's a little clear now why I wrote it that way, because now it's just adding these two together and the 10 to the sixth just carries down because they're both the same exponents. So without putting that in my calculator, I get that this is 10 to the sixth, that's 0.5, and that's 11. So if I want it, I can rewrite this as 1.15 times 10 to the seventh meters. Cool. So now I can put in values here. And the one thing I did for myself, let's see if I can't find my note of what I made it. <laughs> and, and make this note for yourself that GM, this thing you're going to use over and over again, that G times M, which is this G is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th times the mass of the Earth, 5.98 times 10 to the 24th, 24th. That equals roughly, because I'm going to round a little bit, 3.9887 times 10 to the 14th. Why am I doing that? Because you're going to do enough of these calculations that it's easier just to start off with knowing what this value of g times m is. So let's see. 
So the velocity of that satellite then is going to be this value, this 3.980 times 10 to the 14th divided by 14th, not 4, divided by 1.15 times 10 to the 7th. Now, if I wanted to, if my calculator and I still aren't friends, I can simplify these exponents. 14, when I uh, have an exponent divided by an exponent that is the same as taking the difference between the two. So this would be 14 minus seven. So in the top, what do I get? I get 3.988 times 10 to the seventh. Now I'm dividing just by one number, 1.15. And in the end, what do I get? I get that it is moving quickly. 5,868 meters per second. So let's think about that. That means it's tangential velocity. It's that velocity component coming off that way is that large. That's fast. So see how fast other things are going in space.